the Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is author, chef, Rob Hegel, and performer, singer, Paul Lakatus. Chef, author, Rob Hegel was born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. He graduated from the University of Cincinnati, and he was ready to take on the world. You went to New York, didn't you, Rob? Went to New York. I had signed a contract with RCA Records and put out a single in 1970-something, three, I think, <laughs> 74. And uh, that was the beginning of it. That's what I went to New York to do, and I stayed You did? New York. You went to be a singer? Went to be a singer and a songwriter and put, was signed to RCA, uh, worked with RCA for about two years, that's 1980. This is, this is this is what you were looking like. This is what you look like when you were already a success. <laughs> that, that was it. I'm a very famous unknown person. Uh, the, the that was the RCA album. That's probably the only CD that exists of it. RCA still hasn't put it out on CD. It's it's an album that was put out in 1980. Uh, it was a huge song on the East Coast called Tommy Judy and Me that got me on the Dick Clark American Bandstand show. Uh, I came out to LA to be on the bandstand and the producer of the show said, well, it's great that you're here, but we, you can't sing that song. Oh. <laughs> so he made me sing two other songs from the album and, and people were like looking at me and going, we've never heard of this guy. We've never heard of these songs and never to be heard from again. Is that what happened? That's what happened to that album. Well, you, you kept writing songs though. Yes. You I had, have a music career, really. Yeah, I had, I had a song <clears throat> in the movie Grease 2, the bomb shelter song, Let's Do It For Our Country, uh, that Pat Birch, uh, choreographer and director, got me to do that song. Um, wrote a bunch of songs in the late 70s for uh, Paul Schaefer and Greg Evigan, Norman Lear TV show called A Year at the Top, uh, kids show called The Kids from Caper, had a number one dance record, Center Man for Sarah How'd Dash. How'd you get, uh, uh, did you have an agent? No. You got you, how'd you get to all these people? Mr. I, Unknown. I just, I just I, <laughs> you keep walking down the street long enough and somebody says, Rob, turn left. You go, okay, I'll turn left, and then there's somebody there. I was with Don Kirshner for eight years. Oh. Wrote the theme to his con uh, rock concert show. And stayed in the music business till I wrote the last hit for Air Supply, uh, Just As I Am, that was got me my first and only gold record. And, well, so uh, that's great. So your music was career, career was the, the, it finished with a gold record. Finished with a success and a bang. And then you started... A I new started, career. <laughs> uh, well, the, I figure you can't have enough careers. So my next <laughs> career was I decided, well, you know what? Let me go into the restaurant business because I always loved to cook. I was a, a cook all my life. <laughs> and uh, I started. I helped these people start a restaurant called Pasta Presto. And within oh, a year yeah. and a half, we built it from one restaurant to six restaurants, a bar and a bakery. And <laughs> I was the general manager running all these with no previous experience. <laughs> How did you know Italian cooking? Pasta Presto, while it seemed like Italian cooking, <laughs> really wasn't. It was sort of a, it was sort of like here's some spaghetti, let's put some sauce on it, uh, and we'll call it you know Pasta <coughs> Presto. And so you was, were with it, you were ahead of the time again. Yeah, very really. quick. We're very quick and easy. Very successful company for a while. I ended up moving out to California in 1980 while they were still very successful to look for a space out here. Uh -huh. It ended up that I found a beautiful space on the promenade, if, if you know the Third Street Promenade here in, in Santa Monica, and the owner of the restaurant came out and looked at it and he went, mm, I don't know, a little too much money. Nowadays, <laughs> it, was a, it would have been a gold mine, but that was the end of that career. That was the end of that? But you also um, started writing. Yes, that, came, <laughs> that, that actually came after I, I actually did become an executive chef uh, at Saks Fifth Avenue here in Beverly Hills. Oh, so so you stayed I did, in this I, I chef business a little bit. Did you go to, to culinary school? No, I didn't. How did you know what to do and what would work in a kitchen? Because the hardest part is running your kitchen. I have an odd sense of knowing how to deal with the tastes on the tongue, and I don't use a lot of fats. I don't use a lot of sodium. I try to get the flavors out of natural foods and and good herbs and spices to excite the tongue. And 
I got a review uh, after I was uh, opening the, the restaurant at Saks Fifth Avenue when they opened up their new restaurant oh, there. Yeah. I was reviewed <laughs> in a Beverly Hills uh, newspaper as uh, Rob's menu rivals the finest cuisine in Beverly Hills. So that made me very happy. So there you were at Saks, which was a great little lunchroom, oh, wasn't it? Or I don't know, maybe it wasn't little. No, it, 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 65 people. Oh, well, that's... A small room. Uh, did you do all the cooking? Did it all with a man named Jorge. He was my assistant chef. He may still be there. And then you, you, you actually went into wines, a lot of wine pairing with food. Yes, did a lot of... And did you study wines? Did no, you go to, I, just, did you? I went to Napa and Sonoma a lot and went to a lot of wineries. I don't consider myself a wine expert, but I do know the tastes of the tongue. To me, that's between and the that's nose and why. the tongue. That really is where everybody's senses come from. If you can excite that, they're going to be excited about what they're eating. Because we talked it. about it, and you were, t you were talking very knowledgeably about wine, what would go with uh, what meal. We were having fish the other day, and you were saying this would be great with, with such and such a white wine. I was mentioning the Gruner Veltliner, which is a wonderful wine from Austria. Um, what I've been working on is pairing some of the, the new career, the, the soup line, with, with different wines. But there's a jump to this from the chefing at Saks and then quitting that and going to New York for six months, coming back oh. to Beverly Hills, and then sitting around for five years and writing a book. Yeah, let's do this before we get to the yeah. soup. Let's talk about oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> I went, you know I can't read this all. Tuxedo Bob. I'm gonna, who I is told this? you, I'm going to call you every night and read you a chapter over the phone, put you to sleep so you can like listen to it. That's the best thing. They say reading to children. <laughs> That's, there you go. I'll do that. Um, it, it came about, I, I wrote this, I have some very quirky songs that never did anything, but they were all very funny. And uh, I wrote this <laughs> fake bio of a guy named Tuxedo Bob to see if I could use the songs in that way. Oh. My wife Susan read the bio and she says, well, you should write a novel. Well, of course, always on the lookout for a new career. Um, I said, okay, and started to write it. She began to edit it because I can, I write like this. And she goes, no, let's, let's make this a little she carpet. She made you yeah, get let's, into a little. Let's make it look like you're organized. And uh, over the course of five years, it became How a many very pages? funny novel. A thousand pages? <laughs> no, no, it's only uh, 640 something. But it includes all of the song lyrics and a musical screenplay that's in it also. So that's what's so great. It's like you pick up this book, Tuxedo Bob, and you have a screenplay if you want to make a movie out of it, right? If somebody out buys you, this, you, if somebody buys it, they've got they've got a, the movie of Tuxedo Bob, the screenplay of The Mirror of Mr. Moore, which also could be a Broadway show. Oh, right, show. The Mirror of Mr. Moore. Then you could do uh, an HBO. Can I say HBO? You could do a cable special <laughs> of uh, of the recital concert in Las <laughs> Vegas, which is like the climax of the book. Um, it's <laughs> it's just the story of a very honest uh, and quirky person that has a, a very good heart and he stays true to his, his morality and his ideals throughout his life guided by axioms that he learned from his father. Things like popularity is rarely based on merit. Um, <laughs> there, there's many of them. Little, little sayings little from sayings. the family, right? And then you wrote lyrics. To, you have a, a all, CD. All of the songs are available. Um, they're all real songs. They fill up three different CDs. But do they come, do they actually reflect Tuxedo Bob? They reflect Tuxedo Bob and the musical. When I first was working on this book, my first wife happened to work for a publisher in New York, and I presented it as an idea of you can have a book and a CD of the oh, songs in it. that was a great idea. This was years ago, and they said, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Now, you go into a, book, a bookstore, and it's like, here's a book. It's got a CD. Yep. So you were way ahead again. Here we hey, go. I keep saying out, we're way ahead. If you want to find out what's happening tomorrow, talk to me today. Today, <laughs> exactly. So I think what's happening tomorrow is the soup. Gourmet frozen soups. The I new know. Curry. This is so great. Hand me one because I want to. Well, I'll hand you the lavender potato. These are frozen, so it's going to be cold. This is purple potatoes, leeks, and portobello mushrooms with a light coconut milk. It's a low fat, no cholesterol, low sodium soup. It's also vegetarian. And it's while we have okay. this on here, because he's got a close-up, nuts. For soup. For soup. And it's a soup spoon with the n numeral four in it. How did you get this NUTZ stuff? Well, the, the, the Nuts for Soup logo um, came about after um, we got the name through. You have to get, get the domain name. You have to buy to make sure you have it. So we, we got the corporate name. 
And I was working with a couple people on doing the logo and trying to come up with something interesting with an idea of you'll need a bigger spoon, you'll want a bigger spoon. Uh. And I talked to my best friend from high school. He lives in uh, northern Kentucky. He has a graphics design firm. And he says, well, let me do your logo. And I said, well, Dave, you're going to cost me an arm and a leg. I'm just starting. He says, no, no, let me do it for you. In two days, he sends me this logo. And uh, Did you tell him N-U-T-Z? Yeah. You told him that yeah, much, yeah. and then he did this great logo, and, mm -hmm. and underneath it, it's I can't read it because it's so small. What does it, it say? It says, you'll want a bigger spoon. You'll want a bigger spoon, and he's got, a big it, he's got a big tablespoon with a four in it, and then he says, you want a bigger spoon. And you will when you eat these. Lavender potatoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, how exotic is that? Well, I, it, Jorge at Saks was from Peru. And he brought me a purple potato once back in the um, oh. early 90s. And I said, wow, one of these days, I ought to cook with one of these things because they were hard to get then. Well, now They're you can get them because a lot of California farmers are farming them. So I buy them at farmer's markets. And I, I always wanted to make a nice potato soup. But, but to make a potato soup that's like vicious that everybody makes, I don't want to do that. So I try to make everything very unique and different. So let's do this one. Well, coral tomato. That's and yellow coral tomato, tomato. Yellow tomato. Which with are roasted red peppers. Yellow tomatoes are more mild than red tomatoes. Is it, um, I can't open this, but is it... Um, it's safety sealed. Is it safety sealed? Can I push it? That's it? vegetarian also. Uh, is there onions in any of these? There's onions in, in that. In the potato? And, and uh, there's onion base when I do it like, a, maybe I'll do a little onion uh, saute at the very That's beginning with a little bit of uh, olive oil and that'll become part of the puree as the flavor. Hand it's me very another light. one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted butternut squash. We Delish. actually take the uh, the butternut squash and slowly roast it in a single layer so it really caramelizes, brings out the, all the sugars in it. To put brown it. sugar on it? A little touch of brown sugar at the very end and a little touch of maple syrup and a little touch of white sugar. Get the little sugars in there. But a serving that only has two grams of sugars, which is an amazingly low amount. So that's really great and nummy. This is wild mushroom artichoke. Ooh. Spelled in honor of Oscar Wilde. Is that a good color too? Yeah, mm. that's I a like great to, color. If they're not pretty, why eat it? I you know. know your colors. I mean, purple potatoes and coral tomatoes and what was it? Yeah, squash. Butternut squash. Butternut. And colorful. this one, mixing the making that mushroom. Get Four a little different green. kinds of mushrooms <laughs> and all those artichoke hearts. Yeah. And, one, and all those, all fresh. Everything's all fresh. All fresh. All fresh. Now this is the soup that started it all. This is called Eight Lilies. It is the best onion soup on the planet. Oh, this is great. And Because lily, onion is a lily. Yeah, bulb. onions are in the lily family. And my wife was, was had a cold, didn't feel very well last January. And she, she had some of this soup and she said, I've been making that for about 10 years. And she said, you know what? I want to quit my job and sell these soups at the farmer's <gasps> markets. You're kidding. And I went, okay, being the good husband that I am, of course, I said, okay. And in March, we got all the corporate stuff together. I quit my job at the end of March, and two months ago, we launched the company. And uh, let me have the T-shirt before oh. we go any further, because I thought this was great on the back. Nuts for There's soup. There's your nuts for soup. It's so much better than the T-shirts that say, I'm with stupid. And, you know, I know. <laughs> I love this. And the color's great, too. It's a kind of like a nice lavender with the lavender mm -hmm. thing. Okay, the last piece de resistance. Okay, this is a new line. We're, we're, we're starting our nuts for not soup. Oh. <laughs> because they're not soup. We can't soup. call it nuts for not soup, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nuts for not soup, and this is a not soup <laughs> That's item. Right. And this is sun-dried tomato pesto, incredibly concentrated. It's almost addictive. We have people that are buying this now in twos and threes. They just they can't get enough of it every week. So it, you're at farmers markets all over the city. We're only or? at two. We're we're starting to launch the retail lines. We're just finishing the retail packaging, so we should be in stores soon. We're so just, are we going to give Wolfgang Puck, Puck and his frozen pizza a go for the soup? Um, I think so in the in the idea that people are eating a lot healthier now. Yeah. Everything we make, except for a couple things that have some cheese in it, are all that has a safety seal on it. So it's hard okay, to get into. sorry. Low I'm fat, turn no back. cholesterol, low sodium, and, and good nutritional values. And it's like Bill Clinton has a has that heart right. thing. So his doctors say you gotta be on a low sodium, no low fat and diet. And that's what these are. That's what these all are. And these, so if you make a pasta, you can just make a pasta and put this on it as a sauce. With that, you just take a tablespoon of it, throw 
in it just a hot pasta, maybe drizzle a little olive oil That's on it. That's it? It's only That's a teaspoon of this? Only a tablespoon, of, a tablespoon of that. Just you, for a serving. Just for a serving. You can add two. My wife thinks that's a single serving container. So That's what I would think. Yeah. So, but but it, do you it, roast the tomatoes too? No, those are sun-dried tomatoes. I mean, do you yeah. sun-dry them? I don't sun-dry them. No, I oh. buy them already sun-dried oh. because I don't have that big of a house. But you <laughs> must have a farmer who does that for you because it I, goes into... Everything we get, we get from all the farmers from the farmer's markets. They do everything they possibly can for us to provide us with Well, that's a great, great thing. Now this is the last career. Don't come back to us with another career unless it's a uh, your own restaurant. Okay. All right. My soup. Thank place. you, Rob Thank Hagel, you. It's a for being, being on your show. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very much. And don't go away. We'll be right back with Paul Lacacus. Hi, welcome back. I'm Joan Quinn, and I'm here with recording sensation Paul Lacacus, who was born and raised in Westchester County, New York. He went to Westchester Community College, where he studied uh, in the Performing Arts Division department. And I guess you always wanted to be a performer. Yes, I did, actually. <laughs> What happened from community college? You went right to work? Um, well, I left community college and I uh, auditioned for a state school and they said that I can only study, I, w I studied to be a dancer at first, and although I was in the choir as well, um, and they said I can only study either modern or ballet in, in a state school, so I said, oh. well, I, I had the jazz thing flaring up, so I said, let me go down to New York and start studying. So I started studying down in New York. Um, what city were you in? What, um, where, where were you? In New York. Mm -hmm. uh, in Westchester County, uh, where? I was born in Yonkers, New York. In Yonkers. Mm -hmm. So it was like an hour away to New York, right? Yeah, trying to figure. it was like about 40 minutes by train. Yeah. So, it was pretty so you quick. took a jazz class? I took a lot of jazz classes and a lot of modern dance um, uh, in the city. I did take some ballet because you oh. had to. Um, at, the, at the school? At the school, Broadway were? Dance Center, and I studied uh, jazz at Phil Black Studio as well. That was uh, in the 80s. And, um, and then I started um, modeling, and uh, then I went to Europe, and then I recorded my first song in Italy. But were you modeling then? Um, I wasn't modeling Were then. you doing runway? Or, uh, or? I did some runway in, in Milan. I did the oh, that's first. that's so great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love it? It was so exciting because <laughs> I was so young. I was like 19. I was doing like the, the Armani shows. Exactly. This like, is the Greek god yeah. here. <laughs> Lukaka. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm working for Armani. You know, so that was really exciting. Um, it gave me a lot did of... Did you continue dancing though when you were on modeling? I mean, were you um, taking classes every day? I was taking classes classes um, when I, even when I was in Italy um, yeah that's what I meant and that's that's kind of how I got noticed because a lot of uh, my time spent was in the nightclubs um, in between my modeling gigs. Dancing, dancing at the clubs because yes. club t club life was really big yeah. I mean the runway and club life exactly <laughs> that's where everyone hung out you know in, in the industry it was in the nightclubs so that's where um, I got pretty uh, noticed for my dancing and then I was approached by a producer and they were like, well, do you sing? And I said, yeah, you know, I was singing in the choir and stuff um, in college and they um, asked me to record a song and I did and that's how I started. Did recording. you come from a musical background? Was your family, one in your family musical? Um, no one in my family was musical, but I had, um, I have three sisters and a brother. So with five kids in the family, we we sang a lot of uh, you? in church, you know, like, and, you uh, and you played little singing games, probably. Yeah, we did. We sang in the kitchen <laughs> during our chores, you know. <laughs> Good, if that yeah. many kids. Yeah, we had fun. We passed the time that way during our chores. When you were um, working in New York, I think you. You worked with some really great choreographers, named choreographers, didn't you? Um, yeah, like uh, Frank Hatchett um, I studied with, and uh, Phil Black was really a uh, prominent uh, choreographer at the time. So did they think you were going to be a dancer, that they would have, have you going on Broadway? or? Um, I, 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 I didn't have... I didn't think I had the technique for Broadway. Yeah. I was more of like the showman. 
Oh, you, you know knew what, I mean? what you wanted to do. Yeah, I knew what I wanted to do, and I, I studied with all the Broadway dancers. That's because, why I was asking. Yeah, because all, all of my friends in, in, in class had been in music videos and on Broadway. So I took <laughs> class with them, but I was more the one that was like, you know, give me the, the show. So Milan, than, Milan really brought that out, being on the runway. Yeah. You were in the show, and then you got a recording yeah. gig from there? Or yes. A, a, what? I got a record. Uh, I started my uh, recording in Milan, Italy, and uh, my first song was "Boom Boom." Let's go back to my room, which was a big hit. Um, Is it like a disco 80s. song? It's a disco song. Yeah. Sounds like it. How does it go? <laughs> it goes boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room so we can do it all night, and you can make me feel right. Oh. So that it was, it was a disco ditty, they called it at the time. It was great, but is that where you were known in Australia and Japan yes. with that song? Yes, because they that picked song. that up? Yes, yes, they picked it up and it went all around the world. That's so great! Yeah, <laughs> I was pretty lucky and, um, you know, and then I toured a lot uh, all over uh, America and uh, pretty much in Asia. I went to singing Southeast Asia singing. singing. Well, did you do any musicals? Were you like in musicals or were you on your own? I, I didn't do any musicals. I'm more um, the show that I'm working on now that, I, that I'm opening at the, the Wyndham Bellage um, this month is more towards, you know, musical theater and and pop music now. I, I, I didn't really get that as a kid. I didn't want to be a Broadway baby as a kid, oh. you know, but now as I'm getting older and I'm more mature and I can appreciate this different kind of music, yeah. now it seems like I got the bug now. Will there be a place for you, do you think? I mean... I think so. I mean, there, there your are... Your voice, your style, what I meant yes. in that respect. Yes. There, um, I, the things that I have auditioned for, say, my style was like Rent and yeah. Oh, that's Aida, right. Yeah. The Ten Commandments now coming up. You know, those are things that I go out for. Yeah. Now I so. can see that. Of course. Mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, of course. I mean, you have a new CD called Vacation. Yes, I need a vacation. I need a vacation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm actually writing more now. And I wrote that song um, at my work desk at home uh, last year, and I was really stressed out, and it just kind of came to me. <laughs> and you also, you've done. Um, Films, yes. Films, Circuit. Uh, that's Circuit. Um, that was my first film I did three years ago. That's available now. You can rent uh, and, and on DVD. And it is, it's a little independent film? It's a little independent film. Um, it's about the Circuit party scene uh, worldwide, like the big parties that they have out oh. there. Oh, so it kind of really went with your music. Yeah, it went with is my music. Is your music in it? Um, I have one song in oh, the film. Oh, you do? Yeah, so that was another venue that I'm um, getting into is, I think that's my uh, second of the three songs that I have for films now. And we have another one, Sex, another Politics, one. And, and Cocktails. That is actually coming out in January oh. in theaters, and then it'll be also available on DVD then. Oh, good. Yeah. And any music of yours in here? Uh, nope, not that one. <laughs> We, we can't get you in everything. Yeah. We have to talk about this 1020 club. Yeah. Um, which I thought was was really interesting because you're not the only singer. You've got um, 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 more. What's her name? Uh, Morath. Kathy Morath. Kathy Morath. And Ted Brunetti and Janine Roberts Ro Robinson. Um, well, since so Brunetti. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brunetti. Yes, Mr. Brunetti. Mr. Brunetti was in Assassins. Yes, he was. He the was Stephen Sondheim, which I saw on Broadway. Yes. I love. He uh, uh, was, I guess, the original, one of the original people who uh, either did the workshop or the first production. Uh huh. And uh, Ted's really talented. And um, I've been. So did you pick him? Yes. Um, we're all friends, and oh. and he is my acting. Um, person that I go to, you know, he's a really great teacher as well. And um, we were putting this workshop together with all these uh, actors that could sing. So we, we started doing that. It originated at his studio and then I, then I took it, I'm taking it to the 1020. So when I wanted to go out to do this workshop that I've been doing of this kind of intimate music, I said, well, let me do it with my friends, you know, that, that are very talented people and they're very different I mean from Doris Day to ragtime to they do you know, all that yeah we all do different styles Kathy does what Kathy oh, does, she does like, ragtime yeah, Kathy does a Doris Day <coughs> type uh, 
uh, a show all of uh, <laughs> Doris's music and um, my friend Did Janine, she sing those songs? She sings those songs. It's, it's, it's a really great variety of people. And then Janine? And Janine um, was on the tour of Ragtime um, so she sings Our that season. kind of stuff and then Ted has a very of course high falsetto voice and I'm more like pop kind of rock you know baby um, and with some musical theater now. Could this I know it's um, at the at the Wyndham Bellagio. Mm -hmm. Bellage. Bellage. La Bellage. <laughs> <laughs> the Wyndham Bellage. But could it go um, to other cabaret venues? Yes, I think it can. Um, this is I the mean, is it like cabaret? Would it, it be it, in a it's way? It's cabaret with with more like yeah. There's definitely some of my some of my material that is fun and it's cabaret. And it's really fun. And there's other stuff that um, is more like my interpretation of of musical theater um, points of view and messages oh, from talk? musical theater. I talk. Oh, you it. do. And Who I wrote just, the material? Um, I just picked it of the songs that I liked from different Did shows, you? and I think they they reach any generation. And it's about you know, you know from suppressed people in ragtime. I think everyone can relate to the material that I pick because it kind of withstands time. Are you all on stage together, or do you come um, and go? Does no, somebody we, choreograph we, we this? We come and go. We come and go. I do. I do do a duet with um, a girl, my friend Janine. We do a, du a duet from uh, a musical. Uh, so that's kind of fun. That's a lot of fun. So that would be like Broadway stuff. Yeah. That you're yeah. starting to yeah. sing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like um, it's more of the current Broadway stuff that I, that kind of relates to now nowadays life um but also it's like as i said it withstands time everybody can relate to all what's going on but it's not, it's not like i'm pulling out stuff from a long time ago um but there is this one show i do a number i kind of just do it my own way but so you write it and you go and you have a director um musical. not for this oh not for not this for the, oh, not for this show that's I, interesting I, I kinda, because i think you could do it yourself yeah i think i have i did do it myself so we kind of and then with the help of uh, Bruce Coyle as my uh, pianist it was oh, really that's great what I, mean. that's what I bounced mean. everything off of him and so me and him kind of put the show together and we say okay we know how you know he has the eye he has and he the, can yes, see it right? he has the eye so and he's the probably ear. like the director right yeah for your pieces yeah yeah he helps me vocally so much and he's such a good um, such a good guy. That's so. great. Great place to do a show. Yeah. Everyone's coming and going there all the time. Yeah. And we're going to watch for you there. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thanks. Mr. Paul Lukakis. Great. Thanks. Bad. Thanks for being with us. And thanks to all of you for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles today. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 90017. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles.